and then ask them to stand up. It's like us doing squats. Don't do it too many times at the beginning, if, especially if you have an animal with arthritis. Today, I want to talk about ways that you can support your senior pets um, who may be having some decline. Um, not necessarily just seniors, but pets who are uh, struggling with chronic disease, acute disease, um, genetic issues, anything that's causing any of the symptoms that we talked about yesterday with decreased mobility, um, decreased cognitive ability, decreased kidney function, heart function, lung function, you name it. Um, so we want to talk about things uh, that you can do to support your pets. And a lot of this will hold true even for healthy pets. So if you have healthy pets, listen through because this is going to go for a lot of the healthy pets as well. All right. So how are we going to support our pets to decrease the, you know, some of these chronic inflammatory issues that they're having, uh, things that are causing them to decline? Number one, stop giving unnecessary vaccinations. The only vaccine that my animals get is rabies and they do not get rabies according to uh, what they're legally supposed to be doing. They get rabies based on titers um, and when I think it's appropriate for them to have them. So um, you'll have to deal with that however you have to deal with that wherever you live. So that's the biggest issue with that, unfortunately. Um, but Everything else I consider to be optional, particularly in senior pets. And if you read the label on a vaccine, it says to be given to healthy pets. So if you have an animal with cancer, an animal with kidney failure, an animal with heart failure, that's not an animal that is considered healthy. The, in order for a vaccine to work, their immune system has to make a response to it. They have to work really, really hard to make that vaccine actually be protective. It's not like we are injecting a bunch of antibodies. What we're doing is we're injecting fragments of the disease so that the body makes antibodies to it. And that takes a lot of work. So we don't want to give vaccines to animals that are not healthy. And uh, if you have a veterinarian who is saying you have to vaccinate, you have to vaccinate, you need to tell them, no, we are only supposed to give vaccines to healthy animals. Read the label insert. You can print that out from the internet. You can download the uh, drug inserts from um, any vaccine from any drug, actually, you can look them up um, and feel free to carry that with you uh, when you go in and they are saying, we need to do this. And you can say to them, hey, look, my animal is in kidney failure. That's not a healthy animal. That's not an animal that needs to have their immune system stimulated. If you need proof for grooming, boarding, daycare, blah, 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 uh, get titers um, and try to try to avoid that. Try to find a groomer who um, or daycare. There are holistic boarding, daycare, grooming places out there that don't require all of that. So call around and see what you can do. Um, I know that a lot of people learn to groom on their own so that they don't have to go through all of that. Do not use any harsh chemical pesticides on these pets. Oh, you put in their senior dogs, but it's senior dogs, cats, or sick animals of any kind. Um, so again, one, I don't want to use chemical pesticides on my animals, even when they're healthy, but particularly when they are ill, we do not want to be using these neurotoxins on them. If you have an animal who's in cognitive decline, putting a neurotoxin in or on their body is kind of one of the worst things you can do. We want to be supporting their their neurologic system. We'll talk about ways to do that. Now, if you have the spleen removed, uh, if it was cancer, you know, I mean, they may say, well, your dog is cured or we didn't find cancer when we took out the spleen. Um, so they may look at it and say, well, that's now a healthy animal. So I might be splitting hairs a little bit on that one. Uh, you're a bather at your grooming salon. You don't require vaccines. Yay. Put a plug in for your grooming salon, wherever you are. 
Um, the vet oh, I always saw, and I agreed to no more vaccines in our boy. He documented in his chart. Sadly, another vet at the practice vaccinated him while he was boarded there and you never went back. And we've had that happen where, um, I have a story of a client in Ohio who took two dogs in for dentals. He did the titers ahead of time to make sure the dogs were protected, had a conversation with the veterinarian when he went to check the dogs in, in the morning, the, uh, front office staff and the technician who were admitting the dogs said, Oh no, they have to be vaccinated. And he said, Nope, I already, you know, talked to the vet. We, we did titers. We're good. We don't need it. Don't do it. Crossed it off the estimate. And when he picked the dogs up, it was on the bill and it had been done. And the veterinarian wouldn't return his phone call for four days. And when he did finally talk to him, he was not real happy as you can imagine. So, um, you definitely want to, uh, you're a groomer and will groom without vaccines. Hey, all of you groomers who groom with and don't require vaccines, put your information in the feed. Well, if you're looking for clients, <laughs> if you're looking for clients, put your location in where you are because we have so many holistic people who don't want to give their pets vaccines. Uh, a dog in kidney failure, a dog with incontinence needs to be groomed. They need to be kept clean. And if, and they're, those are animals that we don't want to be vaccinating, yet they may still need a really good TheraClean bath or a really good, you know, soothing bath for their skin um, and their coat. So uh, that's kind of the match made in heaven if we can find the groomer who says, yes, I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, handle your pet with kid gloves because I understand that they have some medical issues and I'm not going to make you give them a bunch of vaccines because they already have things that their body is dealing with. So I love that. Um, anybody who's looking for, for more clients, and I know groomers are uh, overwhelmingly busy right now. It took us quite a bit of work to find a groomer for Charlie. Um, okay, so feed a healthy species appropriate diet. This is probably the absolute best thing that you can do for your pets who are ill. So we want to feed a species appropriate diet and we want to feed an illness appropriate diet. So we have recipes on the website for heart disease. We have recipes for kidney disease. Uh, my yin and yang nutrition uh, for dogs book has recipes for dogs. Um, kitty cats are a little trickier, um, but there are companies out there that will make individual diets. There are companies out there that do make species appropriate um, prescription liver diets, kidney diets. Um, there's a picture of ingredients from all provide. Um, I'm thinking that that is pup loaf ingredients right there. Um, so, uh, you can tailor individual diets to your pets based on their medical conditions and make it species appropriate human grade feeding highly processed dry kibble full of fillers and poor quality ingredients is absolutely not going to support good health for your pets. So um, definitely get them the healthiest food you can. And if you have a cat who is absolutely stuck on kibble, they've been there their whole life, try to get some toppers, try to get some fresh fruit, fresh food toppers, see if they'll eat some eggs, see if they'll eat some sardines, see if they'll eat some pumpkin. Um, kitty cats can sometimes be bribed to eat things that are a little different. The other thing that you could try is freeze dried foods. We actually now have, I think it's small batch freeze dried complete meals for kitty cats, um, in chicken, beef and Turkey, I want to say. Um, so that's something that sometimes these cats who are really addicted to dry kibble, you can switch them over to a freeze dried, uh, feed it to them, just crumbled up at first, and then slowly start adding more water to it to get them uh, switched over. Okay. Keep your pets active. Mental stimulation is really critical for these guys. That will help slow cognitive decline. That will get them moving. We talk about muscle atrophy and muscles starting to not work very well. Um, so uh, getting them outside, getting them moving, in whatever way they can, um, like Dr. Tren was talking about on Monday, the dog that 
the golden retriever that couldn't chase the ball anymore, but the owner figured out how to roll the ball to the dog and the dog would roll it back with its nose. Um, so figure out whatever level of mental stimulation you could do. Kitty cats love lasers. So if you have a cat who can move, get them some stimulation with lasers, with toys. Cats are very trainable to play fetch and do tricks. Um, if you find the right treat, Gwen's cats, uh, fell so in love with the momentum chicken hearts that they will do anything that, I mean, she could train them to be circus cats with no problem. Um, so, um, you know, whatever level they can do, if you're doing laser tag with your dog or your cat, make sure they get the reward at the end. It's very frustrating for an animal to go through the chase without the reward at the end. So whether it's a treat or a special toy that they get to play with, um, find something so that there's a reward. Don't leave them frustrated. Ah, so Sonia said the spleen being gone, but the dog has seizures in the past. So there you go. That's a problem too. We don't want to vaccinate in the face of that either. Okay. Um, so mental stimulation and, uh, so whether that's, um, environmental enrichment, walking them on, uh, tactile surfaces, not slippery floors, getting them out on. So uh, you guys on Instagram can't see it, but this is a dog on a brick patio. That's got little grass strips in between it. Um, so walking them on things where they're getting more tactile sensation, uh, setting up little obstacle courses in your house, setting up little obstacle courses outside, um, Physical therapy that you can do with zero equipment is having them step up on a curb if you live in a neighborhood and then down off the curb. If you ha can find an area that has some slope to it, walking them up gentle hills, down gentle hills, zigzagging, that sort of thing. Um, very simple exercise called sit to stand where you, if they are a sloppy sitter and they sit to one side, put them against a wall, ask them to sit and then ask them to stand up. It's like us doing squats. Don't do it too many times at the beginning, if, especially if you have an animal with arthritis, um, but that will help build hind end muscle. Little cavalettis, little uh, poles that you set up for them to step over, that is very, very good. And cats will do these as well. Um, so whether you're using treats to get your cat to sit and then stand up or treats to lure them through a course. Um, Linda Tellington Jones, uh, teaches a maze to do with animals, does it a lot with the horses, helping them walk through a maze, learn where to place their feet, that sort of thing. Um, uh, having them back up, which it's very easy to get animals to back up with a treat, um, that uses the muscles differently and it builds those hind end muscles. So think about if you went for a walk and then you turned around and you did the same walk backwards, you would work totally different muscles. Um, if they're able to go up and down steps, uh, if you have like a front walkway that has, you know, gentle low steps doing up and down, that would be good as well. You can also use um, games like the, I didn't bring any out here, the um, Nina Otteson treat mazes, that sort of thing for animals who are less mobile, that's still mental stimulation for them. Um, so you can use, uh, treat toys. If you don't have treat toys, you can do really simple things where you take, um, uh, like a paper cup or plastic cup and put treats under some of them. Uh, you can hide treats around the house, but, um, different games that you can figure out. Some people will use like a muffin, um, tray and put treats in a couple of them, uh, and have the animals hunt for them. So even if they're, um, they're immobile. These are things that they can do from a lying down position. Um, okay. Uh, use supplements wisely. All right. So things we're going to talk about, we definitely want probiotics, um, for our, our animals that are struggling with their immune system. So these are, I just, we have a lot of different probiotics in the warehouse, but I just picked out two of the adored beasts, Felix's flora and Fido's flora, because those are species appropriate made specifically for cats or specifically for dogs. Gut health is one of our most important things that we have um, because the immune system is mostly in the gut. So our lymphatic system works, our uh, bone marrow, white blood cell count, you know, all that stuff counts, but the good bacteria in the gut have a huge, huge, huge function. And a lot of these animals are on uh, a lot of medications that are screwing up their gut flora. 
Um, so really important that we are supporting that. Um, Omega-3 fatty acids. So I think I have a couple different ones here. Yeah. So Iceland Pure, they make a salmon oil and a white fish oil. Uh, Potency is the algae oil from Adored Beast. Again, we have lots of different um, omega-3 products in the warehouse, but omega-3s are so important for heart health, so important to decrease inflammation. We talked yesterday with the folks from Karoo about um, their new line that has uh, the microalgae oil in it to increase the omega-3 content because most diets are too high in omega-6 and too low in omega-3. Now, if you're feeding a really high quality diet with grass-fed meat and, and you're getting fish in the diet, you're definitely doing better. Your omega-6 to 3 ratio is going to be much lower. Uh, kibble could be as high as 30 to 1. We really want to get it down to 3 to 1, 5 to 1. Um, and maybe even one-to-one -one for some of these animals that really have a lot of inflammatory problems or illnesses going on. Cognitive function, the brain needs omega-3s. If we don't have enough omega-3s, cognitive decline is a huge issue and very, very important for joint health. So I can't, can't um, stress enough the importance of omega-3s for these animals who are ill. Um, and sometimes we do find if we have... Uh, significant liver disease, liver tumors, that sort of thing. Um, sometimes the liquid fish oil is a little hard for them to deal with. So you can go with an encapsulated or you could try phytoplankton or algae oil. Sometimes they'll handle that a little bit better um, just because sometimes we get soft stools with uh, liver disease with fish oils. Um, so antioxidants, we got lots of ways we can, we can provide antioxidants, but... Um, so one of the ways we can do it is with fruits and berries. So this uh, healthy immunity from Kin and Kind has blueberries and cranberries. Uh, this is Momentum's new antioxidant boost that you can just use as a topper or as treats. It's got blueberries and carrots and spirulina. Um, we've got the dog greens that has uh, spirulina, chlorella. We've got the uh, green juju, just greens. There's just so many antioxidants you can use. Um, I'm really big on, uh, I may have done these out of order for you, Joey. I'm sorry. Um, really big on CoQ10. Uh, CoQ10 is really important for brain function, heart function. It's a great antioxidant. Um, and I feel like our animals do make CoQ10 in their body, but they don't do it very well when they get older or if they have chronic disease going on. So uh, I feel like all of us people and all of our pets should be on CoQ10 as we age. Um, what else have I got here? Oh, healthy gut. Joey, I am really going back and forth on you. I'm sorry. Uh, healthy gut. So I do recommend adding digestive enzymes if they're um, uh, much old, older pets um, or if they're having any digestive issues at all. We want to help them with their digestion. A lot of these animals will be able to uh, remain on a raw diet. Some of them need to be moved over to a gently cooked diet. We kind of have to pre-digest things a little bit for them, but a digestive enzyme can really help them in that, um, that category as well. Um, oils and IBD aren't recommended. Th oh, you can use oils. Uh, thoughts on krill. I'd love it. Um, okay. How many supplements are too much for older pets? Well, Stewie was on 25. You'd, I, you the it's it's not that there's too much it's that you have to target what you're targeting and you need to make sure that everything plays well together and that you're not duplicating and that's where i find that a lot of times people are duplicating um so you end up with too much stuff because you're it's like oh that company has something that sounds good that company has something that sounds good um but then when you look at the ingredients there's a lot of overlap and so you should pick the one that works the best for whatever it is that you're dealing with. Um, a dull coat, uh, feed the lung element for one thing, because that's in charge of hair, um, and then get some oils in there and some blood tonics. Um, let's see. Oh, cancer fighting supplements. Oh, let's see. we got a couple things here. All right, let's do cancer fighters. Um, so cancer fighters, you know, I am a mushroom nut. Um, so turkey tail is where we go a lot of times, um, for cancer, because we do have great evidence that it's good for that. So we've got liquid tincture by adored beast. We've got the real mushrooms, turkey tail. Um, we also have the myco dog. I didn't bring any of those over. 
Um, her products are great as well. Uh, five Defenders from Real Mushrooms comes in a capsule or a powder. Um, and then also for immune support, we have vitamin C. So this used to be called Ester C and now it's called Immune Boost. Um, so vitamin C is a great antioxidant and great for fighting cancer. For mobility, um, green lip muscles, uh, deer antler velvet. Um, we want to support their, um, their joints. Uh, so we need some joint support in there as well. Okay, that's my stack of stuff. All right. Have your pet examined by your veterinarian more frequently. It is pretty critical for these kids. Um, once a year exam isn't going to do it in a senior pet or in an animal that has um, significant disease that they are dealing with. Um, at some point, you'll have to make a decision with your veterinarian uh, if you're moving into hospice care or palliative care. You know, how much do you care about what the lab values are saying? Um, I use lab values to monitor kind of the progression of things, but that doesn't mean you have to have them done every week. It doesn't mean you have to have them done every month. Um, I would say do them if you're seeing a, a change in how the animal is acting. Um, but you do want to maintain good contact and communication with whoever you are working with for your hospice and palliative care. So whether that's um, a, a veterinary technician, uh, a doctor, um, some of that can be done with telemedicine, uh, which is kind of nice that we can do that now. Um, but you do want to keep in touch and have active communication going on with how things are progressing with your pet. Get them outside. We kind of talked that, about that a little bit, but even, even if you have to take them in a wagon, a stroller, a backpack. So uh, for those who can see the video, there's Stewie out in the yard playing with the cats. And um, this was only a few months before Stewie passed. And yet, you know, significant heart disease, like end stage heart disease and kidney disease and trotting around the yard with the cats and playing. He just loved getting out in the sun. Um, so whether you use a stroller, a wagon, a backpack, however you can get them out. And even kitty cats, even if they've been an indoor kitty cat their whole life, if you can put them in a stroller or one of those really cool cat backpacks that they have now, or get them out in a catio. Um, I've had clients get the, like the wire dog crates um, and take their cat outside and put them in the sun in that so that they can, and if you take the tray out of the bottom, they can kind of scratch in the grass a little bit, get a little bit of uh, smell tour going on, um, soak up some sunshine. Most kitty cats, if you take them out in a crate or something, put a bed in the bottom, the sun shining on them, they're going to curl up and take a great nap, uh, and just breathe some fresh air. So if that's a possibility, um, go for it. Um, let's see, regular grooming. We talked about that a little bit, but really, really critical. Um, a lot of cats will stop grooming themselves. And so their coat gets really clumpy. It gets dry. It gets flaky. It gets matted. Uh, so really important and be very careful when you're grooming senior pets because they may not have as much muscle mass. They may not have as much fat covering. Um, they, and, and I keep saying senior, but really, I mean, anybody who's in decline, whether it's a, you know, a young animal, whatever disease they have going on, but, um, be very careful if they don't have much muscle mass, don't have fat covering, uh, and their bones are kind of pointy, uh, be careful that when you're grooming them, it's not too hard or too harsh for them and that it's comfortable for them because they may be a little tender, uh, and they may be a little more sensitive. So just be careful with that. Um, how often do I recommend blood work for seniors? At least twice a year. So for our uh, not senior pets, um, once a year. For our seniors, um, at least twice a year. And then if they've got something critical, like in our office, if they had something really critical going on or if they were on long-term medications, we had them come in four times a year, so every three months, uh, because I wanted to know if there were any bad effects going on with, uh, you know, liver, kidney, uh, anything going on with, um, the drugs causing issues and spend as much time with your, with these pets as you can. You will never regret spending time. Um, when Myra had her cancer, uh, we only had eight weeks from diagnosis until when we lost her, but every single day we 
spent a lot of time with Myra and we woke up every morning and said, what does Myra want to do today? Because that was very, very important to us that we had memories. We took a lot of ton of pictures. So you might want to schedule a photo shoot, um, go different places. Uh, that's really stimulating. So if you live anywhere near a beach or a lake or a pond, um, go find some trails. Uh, again, strollers, wagons, backpacks, whatever it takes. Remember, their world may be shrinking. They may not be as active. They may not hear as much. They may not see as much. Um, so they need uh, that companionship and that comfort of knowing that your you their pet parent their pack leader um that you were there for them and that you were going to keep them safe okay everybody have a wonderful afternoon go spend time with your pets